So here's an interesting exercise for you. What if we take the five toughest behavioral interview questions uh, of all time? I, I made extensive research and based on feedback from, uh, from my clients and also feed, feedback from, from a poll that I did here on YouTube, I identified these five questions. So what if we went through these questions together right now to see whether if are, you're able to come up with an answer on the spot? And uh, on number five, we have, um, tell me about the time when you apologized to someone. So, but let's think first a bit here, why would an interviewer ask you such a question? The interviewer wants to ask you such a question because they want to see your interpersonal skills. They want to see um, if you're someone that's able to listen to other parties, if uh, you're someone um, rather reactive than, uh, than proactive. And uh, to give an example here, um, a weaker example would be when you apologize to someone by email, when compared to an example where you um, set up a meeting with that person to apologize. Uh, of course, your example should be genuine, should be a recent one. And uh, uh, if you could, if you could also uh, say it in one and a half minutes, uh, maybe two, two and a half minutes at most, that would be great. So do you have did you already have uh, an example in mind um, uh, if you did that's great then we can move on um, on number four what's your weakness so surprisingly this is a very tough question especially because many people tend to tend to use uh, tend to turn positives into negatives such as i work a lot i work too much at times i take work too seriously uh, when in fact, you know, especially when you're applying for a high-performing company, that's something that uh, that's expected from you. So, um, what would be an interesting weakness? Well, maybe if you're uh, if you're a salesperson applying for a sales role, you might want to use deep technical expertise as uh, as one of your weaknesses, and you'd pitches such as uh, whenever I get a technical challenge, I would always have uh, my my team of uh, experts whom I can call, whom I can ask. Uh, to, to, uh, to help me on this. And similarly, if you're applying for a technical role, you could say that, hey, I've been all my life in technical roles, so my experience with uh, selling products uh, to end customers is quite limited, is rather limited. So, so depending on what, what's the, the type of job that you're applying for. Now, it's also possible that you, you could have a little bit of, of these both worlds. And um, now one scenario in this case could be introversion. Then early in your career, notice you're an introvert and ever since you work to fix this. And this is something that bankers tend to use all the time. So um, what's your weakness? Did you already manage to come up with something? Uh, there, there's, there is a possibility to come up with, uh, uh, with a lot more creative examples here. Just think about it. And by the way, uh, public speaking, uh, it's, a, it's a too commonly used example to, to be um, to, to, to be a great example for, for, for most roles. So I, I'd rather not use this one, especially, I mean, except maybe if you're applying for an entry level role. So um, there, there's this. Um, number three, a time when you missed an obvious solution to a problem. What's the time that you missed an obvious solution to a problem? I noticed. Uh, that uh, technical people tend to come out, uh, tend to have a hard time coming up with, uh, with answers here simply because, you know, I mean, it's also an, an, an ego thing like, okay, <laughs> you, you omitted something. It, it doesn't come in natural to say, hey, I was wrong. I, I, I sit there and work for three days when in fact the solution was uh, quite obvious. But um, let's think of this for, from another perspective. Why would an interviewer ask you such a question as time when you, when you uh, missed an obvious solution to a problem? This is because they want to see how do you analyze the situation, your ability to analyze that particular situation. And um, also, more often than not, uh, it's not excluded that you ask for help from other parties, that someone got you unstuck from, uh, from, from such a situation. Uh, one note here would be that um, I, would, I, would, I would mention, I would rather make sure that this, my example would be from professional context. And uh, this applies to pretty much 
any example that you would want to give in a job interview because yeah this is what you're talking about your professional career um, needless to say uh, this is a behavioral question as well so uh, you should employ the star method to answer it so um, there you go hopefully you have something uh, you have something by now uh, number two Tell me about the time when you were 75% through a project and had to pivot strategy. So let me just rephrase this once to make sure to ensure that everyone understands what this means. So this question asked for a time when, uh, when you were um, almost done with the project because of some change in the, inv in the environment, you had to pivot strategy in order to ensure successful delivery of this project. So uh, this is a success story after all, this is not asking you for a failure. This is asking you for a time when you struggle to deliver something because something changed, something outside of your power changed and uh, this triggered your, uh, your problem solving skills. And um, I, I believe that the number one reason why people having a hard time are having a hard time to, to come up with an example for this one is because they cannot r really think of a specific, they cannot zoom in into a situation to a certain extent, to that extent that they would think that the project had a change in scope or, uh, when it was uh, close to its completion. But if you think about it, it's impossible not to have examples for such questions. In fact, the behavioral questions are designed in such a way that everyone has an answer for them. So, uh, just think about the project that had some challenges in it and try to zoom in or zoom out of that of those challenges so they are 75% of through the project through a part of that project actually and uh, but this is um, how you how you will obtain uh, your your example here so hopefully you have you've already had have some uh, something in mind by now by the way within a star format always in a star format and um, number one most uh, challenging question to, to answer in job interviews is uh, unsurprisingly tell me about the time when you failed uh, unsurprisingly because this is, is uh, something that comes unnatural for for many people um, actually the, the way it goes is something like this many people say oh I have a ton of failures okay just tell me just one 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 that's 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 a proper failure that you could quantify something that had an impact and something that you learn to to grow from it can you think of something on the spot um, more often than not, these types of questions, if you're not good at behavioral interviewing, can take one or two days to come out with a, with a great answer. But believe me, the, the time investment into these things is, is worthwhile. Uh, why it's worthwhile? Because a failure is, uh, is an essential element of any uh, job interview or of any interviewer that's serious about uh, behavioral interviewing in, in the first place. And uh, strong examples here can easily differentiate you from other candidates simply because you prepared for the for the job interview so this is why it, uh, it pays it pays off to, to prepare these failures uh, why would anyone ask you for a failure um, first and foremost it must be a genuine one many people don't come up with genuine failures and uh, if you're experienced at interviewing people you'll you'll read them out in the first <laughs> few seconds of their answer and number two they want to see if you are the type who learns who grows from your mistakes. That's why I recommend people in the star format, in the star answer for a failure story, to spend one or two sentences for the situation, two or three sentences for the action, and three or more sentences for the learnings, how you grew from that specific failure. And uh, maybe one last note here, don't end a failure story. Don't, don't talk about the learnings within a negative context. Sell positivity, sell yourself as a positive person, because after all, uh, they would want to hire someone they'd enjoy working with in their work in their in their day-to-day -day, uh, operations so uh, just uh, keep these things in mind so um, there you go these are my uh, top five picks hopefully you found this exercise uh, interesting and uh, by the way if you want to support this channel please please feel free to to share your interview outcomes in the comment sections of the video thank you